Hello everyone, this is Juan Sarmiento and today is Friday, January the 28th. Uh, today's decline notwithstanding, meaning in our profits, so far this year we have $5,812.50. And uh, as you can see, uh, the market is rebounding round right now. If you go through this uh, trades, what we need to do is neutralize our deltas because while the markets are rallying we might be able to make some money on the upside provided that the conditions are right that the volatility holds more or less uh, well and that the deltas are become positive go from neutral to positive so let's go through these trades and you can see click here on the pnl and see particularly those that are open and are profitable because you know that's important to know for example this Wells Fargo is on the downside for the year but you know you'd have to see what is overall since uh, we enter the trade and for example if you go WFC select that here so that it shows here uh, or just simply enter it in this symbol here and then see orders Filled and the history and as you can see this was a trade entered in uh, January so not profitable okay that's important to know so we can copy this by right click on it and say analyze trade and that takes it to the analyze tab and here's the trade okay you can hide the position but in this case, either way, hiding the position or hiding the new, have hiding the simulation, you will see that the PNL is the same. Exactly the same. It's just that this is the active trade, and there have been no rollovers, so it is identical to the simulation. All right. All right. So we need to know that uh, when we decide whether we want to keep the trade, move it over, uh, neutralize the deltas. Neutralizing the delta is a profit taking move and right now we have no profit yet. Let's take a look at the chart and see if Wells Fargo is going to continue to decline. I would suspect it will. This is a wave one to a third wave still to come in my opinion. Okay? That's just an analysis based on Elliott wave. Uh, you usually have three waves, five waves, that kind of thing. So, um, but you don't have to believe that at all. You just adjust your deltas accordingly. If you think that the market is simply going sideways, leave it alone. If you think the market will bounce back up, you need to have your deltas um, positive, but you would only turn them positive if you felt that the stock has made a bottom. I don't believe that, so I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, let's go through all our trades here and see which ones we have made profits, which ones we should neutralize our delta. So let's start with Home Depot and go to the Analyze tab. Uh, we can delete all this. We will be back to it if we need to. Show the position. And yeah, it looks like this. My deltas are practically neutral but it looks like I have had two trades, one in the 410 area, or perhaps I made some adjustments. Let's go to the monitor tab, and here's my original trade at 410, and you see how I have been collecting profits by lowering my strike price. So obviously I started with the entry of a Gini trade here. Let's hide this, and, and then I'll show you what I've done so far. Okay, so we started with this, then we made a rollover, and make sure that you understand that uh, there may have been another trade before that I adjusted, but here I went to December the 17th to January the 7th. So that's a rollover of my shorts here, okay? And as you can see, I have only one, so analyze that. And this is the trade now. Obviously, this is not valid yet. You need to put enter all your trades uh, here. 
I roll down a put from 410 to 390, okay? Analyze trade. That's a roll down. So when we do this, then it looks like a little better. Let's continue on. This is just not co correct because we haven't shown all the trades yet. Uh, then I sold a call here. But this is from another trade because how do I know that? Because it says here February I'm opening a 410. Yeah, that's not the current trade. It's a February 4th. This is a put and I obviously did sell that. So that's correct. So let's say analyze trade. And here, now it's starting to show my profit so far with this trade. Okay, you can see that. Let's add that I'm here and $369. Let's move on. That's another roll down from 390 to 370. So you see, as I every week, I would take a little profit by rolling it down. Okay, and again from 370 to 350 and this is my profit so to speak not much and then finally I had another what happened here let's go to the analyst yeah finally I had this 45 put which I'm selling against it 350 you see it's not a roll down it's just a um, completing a um, uh, spread and here what is this is how, how our trade looks like with 601 dollar profit okay. so you would have to see what all these trades but you can keep this number in mind 60106. And now we can delete all that. 601, I'm going to write it down. 601.6. 1.06. Okay. Because, now it just changed, but it doesn't matter. Let's go over here. Show all. And I have my 45 here matched with the 350. So that's a vertical spread. And you can create a closing order or a uh, diagonal here. And then analyze the opposite. And that's the original trade. Okay. So this 340 and 350, you see 970 minus 510. That's a way to adjust. Let's see a calculator here. So the 350 cost me 970 and I'm going to subtract 510 which is what I got for the 345 put right minus so the cost of this spread okay the cost of this spread is 460 let's copy that and paste it here Now, what is remaining is the 410. You see, 410, 410, 410. So let's analyze closing and then say double diagonal 410. And obviously, it's the opposite. So then analyze opposite. And you can see that I have 410. We have one put here expiring on the 18th. And the February 4th, I have one and one okay one and one what i do have two of is the call so we're going to adjust that customize it and say two for the call right here there all right and now i hide the position and you remember that i have six hundred and one dollar and six cents 
So that means that this debit, when all is all done, should add up to a profit of 610. So I'm going to adjust this in negative. It's a credit. Let's say 5. Uh, no, that's 430, 493, that's 6. Okay, so I'm going to increase it or decrease the price until I get to 601 or 7. And that's the, that's the trade, okay? When all the adjustments are done, this is the essentially the trade that I have. And uh, here it is. This is a winner and this is a loser. You can exit this whenever you want. Okay, if I exit this portion, the short put, well, if first of all, this is what it will look like. It's a calendar spread. Okay, and suppose the market goes down to four, three forty-five, we will get the most out of that trade. But this is the other trade. It's a bullish trade. Okay, so you want to see how much this is worth today? Go to the monitor tab, select Home Depot, and it tells you right here the market value of that trade is four hundred and forty-six dollars and fifty cents, which means we have already take, taken our profits. So that the year-to-date value is five hundred and profit is five hundred and fifty-four dollars. Okay, that's how you analyze what you have. Do I want to get out of it? Well, let's go look at the chart of Home Depot. Well, I think it's right now it's moving sideways. It could have a second drop or it could go back up. So yeah, I think it's gonna make one big move in either direction. And look, we are expecting earnings. Remember my philosophy is for earnings, well, if you don't have much there, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's a lottery ticket. $447 lottery ticket. Okay, all right, let's move on to TER. And TER is right here. And year to date, we have $2,800. You can see that the stock actually dropped after earnings. TER yesterday. Right here. This is what, thing of beauty, this is what you want to see. Okay, a big drop like that. Okay, so we're gonna adjust that, don't we? We have to. So let's go to the Analyze tab and show all. And obviously I made adjustments along the way. So let's do the same as we did for Home Depot. Go over here, nine orders. Okay, so this is the original and we have had adjustments along the way. Okay, first I sold two puts, and then here, uh, oh, another, this is um, a rollover from November to December. Then here, it looks like the stock was, so as the stock was going up, I was adjusting it by rolling it up. You see that? That's a vertical. I sold one call and I bought at a higher strike price. Then I sold two puts, then I did another. This is a rollover from December to January. And then I, I did another rollover, which means the stock was going significantly higher to 70, you see? I sold the one call at 35 and bought it at a higher strike price. And now that 70, well, we will never see it that appreciated ever again. But what we did was take profits when we did that. Okay, I hope you understand that. Then the, this is another put. I sold another put. This is a rollover in a sense. It's just that the uh, previous put, the January put, it simply expired worthless. And I didn't need to do anything. On the call side, I did because it was in the money. Okay, so let's, let's go to the Analyze tab, and this is what we have. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, look at the delta, it's 105. So we need to take profits. How do we take profits? Well, you can sell puts, obviously, 
but you can also do a rollover. So here we see our puts. We have four here. Let's isolate our puts. Okay, we have four here and two short ones. Okay, you may encounter because the stock is at 110 and you have the February 135 puts. You may have your broker say, hey, you have this assigned. Well, if you get assigned, that means you would end up with um, stock shares of stock, in which case you can sell the shares of stock and simultaneously sell your puts, this uh, April puts. How? With a covered call. And that way they, they get cancelled. But right now, assuming that the trade will continue the way it is, we have two outstanding puts at 135. The other two, you leave it alone in case you do that, need to do that cover call. But this cover put that is, you know, cover stock. In this case, what we're going to do is sell the two of them, the outstanding puts. You see, we have four puts long and two puts short. So the difference between the two is two, two long puts. With those two long puts, I can do whatever I want. I can sell them or I can roll them down. If I sell them, analyze closing, I'm going to get, let's say, two here. If I were to sell the two of them, I will get $25.70. Okay? And then my trade becomes bullish. That means I'm expecting the stock to go up. Well, I don't have to do that, but I certainly need to neutralize those. So I'm going to say that analyze rolling. Okay, and then I'm going to change this. Let's ignore this two short puts for a minute. The put, 14 April put, I'm going to do only roll it down, same expiration, but a different strike price. In this case, the current strike price or the price of the stock is. 111 so we can do the sell the 110 okay so let's I mean buy the 110 put let's buy 110 put and we're gonna do only two of them and instead of July it needs to be the same as the current same expiration as the current long puts right there and then I will get $17.40 okay and as I do that I'm still Delta negative Okay, but uh, as you can see, it's delta negative, but not by much, it's 33. Okay, I can do that, or I can sell these that turns out to positive. Okay, so somewhere in between, how about one? We say sell one straight put, and that minus 27, and we do one rollover, and that makes my delta 10. Okay, I'm still um, well, wanting to make money on the put side because I still have one long 110 put if I did that. But I'm, I'm going to get a lot of the money back. Okay, and then that one put becomes a lottery ticket. This 110. First, let's sell one of the outstanding call, uh, puts. Let's do that. And when you do the one single put, it should fill immediately. And the, there it is. And it gets filled. This is what my trade looks like now. Minus 26.90. And now I'm going to do my roll down. And it becomes 10 positive. 10 deltas. And as you can see, I'm just rolling down the 335 put that I have, 135 put that I have remaining here, outstanding, and lowering it to 110. And that's a way to take profits. And I'm going to get $1,735 back, and that gets subtracted from the value of my trade. Yet, I'm still delta neutral, and I still could make more money on this trade if the stock collapses from here and let's go let's say it goes to 70 for whatever miracle 
it goes to 70, wow, we make a great deal of money. If it goes up to 135 again here, I will make additional money. Okay, now you can see that the vertical is taking a little longer to get filled. That's normal. That's to be expected. But at, before the end of the day, I would adjust straight to make sure it gets filled if it doesn't get filled today, uh, right, right now. Okay, let's go to UPS. Oh, I see that the Home Depot is in, um, expiring. Yeah, there is a expiring in the money. We'll be back to that. Let's continue on to UPS, okay? Let's go to the Analyze tab. Okay, in this case, we are down here. And let's go to the monitor tab, account statement, and UPS. I have done a bunch of adjustments here. First, you have a double diagonal, two double diagonals, and then a calendar. Okay, we can copy all that. And the vertical field on the TER. UPS, then I roll over, then I roll over again, and then uh, this is I roll over, and this is what we have. As you can see, it's delta negative by not, not by much. Okay, let's take a look at the chart. Okay, earnings are coming up. Okay, so what do we want to do about that? Well, imagine that the volatility is going to drop significantly. So unless you don't have much on that trade, you know, $2,821, I would say that's pretty considerable amount and we need to make an adjustment. Let's go to analyze trade. High the simulation. And what would we do here? Well, we have a 28, January 28th, that's expiring today. So it's a call. That's going to expire worthless. Okay. Do I need to sell, let's say, a February call? I think it probably would be worthless. Let's see, what would be a call? If I were to sell one call at the 210 strike price, well, it will be worth $2.09. That's not too bad. Let me get rid of all this. I think we have, we understand what went on here. Okay, so this call is going to expire worthless today. So I'm going to sell an additional one for $2. $1.97. Okay, and this is what it will look like. Goes from minus 9.58 to minus 31. Let's send that. Great. Okay, so you can count on this expiring today. Okay, and by selling that, I just reduced my money in the trade. Let's see how much we have. UPS. Uh, yeah, I reduced it by 200 and some odd dollars. So I'm going to leave it like this. And imagine that this goes away today and this is what we have. Okay, our deltas are close to neutrality. If the stock rallies strongly, we may end up here. If it collapses, it will give us additional money. And the only risk we have now is earnings volatility declining. Okay. If it matters to you. Okay. You may want to exit the trade before the earnings, but the earnings is coming up very soon. Next week on the 1st of February. Okay, and you may want to exit it. I think that the stock might continue down. It just crossed the Ichimoku cloud and it's staying there. 
hernias might be bad and the stock might collapse. It's my guess, but you know, often the technical analysis gets blown away by earnings. <laughs> so don't count on that. Okay, let's go to the analyze tab. And I'm gonna leave it like that because we have fairly neutral. Okay, you know what? We can further neutralize our deltas by rolling down this put here. This, yeah, I think it's worth doing that and then reducing the amount of options we have, the, the amount of cash we have on the trade value. Okay, so let's analyze rolling just to one. And that way we will re neutralize our deltas and reduce the value on that trade. And to do that, I'm going to lower it to 195 or 190. And it needs to be the same expiration, March the 18th. And then I'm going to get a thousand dollar credit. That's perfect. And look at my deltas now are close to neutrality. You can want to neutralize it even further, go to 190. And then the, it's close to the delta neutrality. That sounds great. Okay, let's do that. And that gives us $1,160. And if we go to the monitor tab, you would see that this reducing by $1,000, then it becomes $1,600. Okay, it's more of a lottery ticket, ten, and I don't feel bad about it. So by neutralizing my deltas, I'm taking profits and lowering the market value of the trade, that, which means our risk, the money we have in the trade gets reduced. Okay. Okay, let's go to Wells Fargo. First, check it out here. Okay, that's a full trade, $8,800. Let's go to the Analyze tab. Yeah, I'm not going to change anything about this. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think it will continue down. Uh, let's review Home Depot. Okay, uh, yeah, these are expiring next week, so we're fine with that. It has a in the money sign here. Okay, and now I'm going to tell you the stocks that I consider for trades today. One was Apple. It jumped after earnings and it looks like it's continuing up right now. Volatility is still a little too high. It's declining though, you can see. So we can wait until next week to do that, to enter that trade. Let's take a look. If you go trade, all positions. And you would have to look for May, a 65, by custom, Gini trade. And let's analyze that. That's my UPS trade. Excellent. So if you go, let's go quickly to the UPS here. And now we have 1,442. That's the real risk that we have. So about a little over 1% of my account. Doesn't bother me. Okay. This will be the Apple trade, and you can see it's in the 30s here, but I think it's still declining, the volatility is still declining. So, yeah, we can see if it's going to go higher or not, and the volatility should collapse, and then we can enter the trade. I also saw GLW, I think. Yeah, same thing here with GLW as Corning Glass, and you can see that it's very nice jump after earnings, but the volatility is not there yet. So you would see that in this environment right now, volatility is 
a little high still from the decline in the indices as of late. So we need to wait, um, you know, that's the S&P 500. We need to wait until there is a rally and then perhaps another attempt, another failure here. I think it will probably go to test the Ichimoku cloud and then come down. Or it could be simply going sideways. We'll see. That's for the ES. The Nasdaq is the same thing. It's below the Ichimoku cloud. That's turned red, which means we are in a bear market. The volatility is spiking. As you can see, that's the VIX. And this is the Dow Jones also below the Ichimoku cloud and the leading cloud is turning red. So uh, I looked at uh, other stocks that have been strong after earnings, Corning um, and uh, Apple come to mind. There is another one I can't remember right now, but it's the same situation. The volatility is still a little too high. We need to wait until it comes down. Okay. Uh, our account is right hitting close to a thousand, a uh, hundred thousand. You remember that we started this trade with 50,000 uh, a few years back. Okay. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me and see you next time. Bye-bye.